Hello everyone, welcome back to my JAXA RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. It's been a while since I posted a video in this career and that's mainly because my Twitch live streams where I normally did this career have been occupied by Starfield and this particular live stream was from a month ago but it's still one of the more current episodes so you're not missing too much and we'll catch up pretty soon. In the previous episode, I ended talking about replacing the advanced command pod, that awful looking one that's really too long, with something else with the same exact stats. And I decided to model that during this live stream. And it took about an hour to do the modeling and the texturing, and then configuring took another hour because there's all sorts of configurations for RP1, and I got some of it wrong and we had to fix things up. Uh, but we do get to plenty of launches during this video. And so here is the modeling part with the blender. I just wanted a simple pod that would have exactly the same stats as that advanced command pod, uh, except we won't have the heat shield built in. The heat shield will be a separate part. It will be one of the adjustable heat shields. So yeah, there I'm making the RCS ports. Here is the unwrapping for the textures. And I do this all very quickly. Uh, I just wanted something simple. It, it'll still look better than the advanced command pod. And there's the texturing in uh, substance painter and we just have simple sort of uh, grid like I sort of wanted the Gemini look for it I mainly wanted it to look like Gemini uh, but not be Gemini because Gemini costs more to unlock uh, amazingly enough uh, I guess it has some special feature that this doesn't have and we ultimately find out that the advanced command pod doesn't have control above Leo so maybe that's the thing Gemini can go beyond Leo and uh, this will not be able to, uh, but yes, the configuring, I just copy the advanced command pod as much as possible to make sure that it's consistent with it so that we our pricing is the same and we don't have to worry about that. And I get some things wrong, but I'm going to go to the original audio during the live stream now and we'll catch up with that. And we'll also be doing the targeted satellite program during this particular video. So here it is. Second gen capsules. Vegas command pod. Doesn't look great right here. Let's see it in the VAB. Well, that's the core, that makes sense. It's smaller. And we'll need a adjustable heat shield. Mercury it is. Okay, so we seem to have a Vegas command pod, but is it configured properly? 8,007, it says the cost is. That one has 8,147. That means there's something different. Gosh darn it. Okay, command, it says 0 watts, lifting surface 0.35. This one is 1.91 kilowatts. So we're missing something that causes it to be 0 watts. The RCS is the same. Modular fuel tank 525. Part allows. Oh, I forgot the controller. Did I or did I not? It doesn't seem to have that controller on here. Same sort of thing except the blade. Well, it'd be more expensive maybe because of the ablator. So we're just missing the controller. Interplanetary false. Gosh darn it. So, so much for the moon or anything. I don't know. Yeah, I, I would have supposed so. Yeah. So it's forcing us not to use this for the moon. I can't do anything about it because I want the same price. Oop, cute thing. How's... Okay, it is bigger than Mercury. It's sort of a different format than Gemini. I, I should make it longer, really. But anyway... But the advanced command pod was lighter than Gemini. How, how does that work? So uh, this is 1.344 tons, it says. Gemini cabin, this is 1.3759 tons. I guess to make up for how bad it looks, they tried to make it lighter. I mean, how, how, is, this, how is this lighter than that? Now does it say zero? Yeah, it says zero watts up here. Okay, I think we're close enough to being exactly the same. That's a lot of extra delta V. 
I was worried about the thrust weight ratio, but I'm less worried now. Um, we should have like a launch escape system or something. But those are expensive. The, the Mercury one was pretty cheap though. It's only 8,000. I feel like it should be a different color rocket though, huh? We've already got this done, we're just milking the money from this. Crew orbit deprecated? Wait a minute. Okay, hold on. No, I just, I just. Oh, okay, they 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 created a crude orbit deprecate. That's it's fine. It's fine. Uh, we uh we we're, no don't panic. So um, what happened was you remember in my European Space Agency series, I updated the mods and they created a new requirement in the orbital program that asked us to get Mark One Pod Science. Apparently now they've updated it again, and so we have a deprecated version that doesn't have the Mark 1 science. Uh, because I was using it before. And so we've got the legacy crude orbit one that doesn't have that requirement. Except now I can do that. But anyway, it's fine. Okay, we're safe, we're safe. It still says unlock cost 168 though. That's wrong. Hmm. I, I just wrote in the entry cost for the Maya. because the tag system didn't work with it. So just for reference, right now it says 447,000 for the entry cost on the advanced command pod. And I'm gonna type that in for my spacecraft. Okay, now it's 6, 6, uh, 615 up there, which is what it was supposed to be. 447,000. And 447,000 and 615 was what I had on the mock-up with that pod before. So that looks good. The actual unlock cost is closer, but it's not exactly correct. But I think that cost is the blade, uh, blader on the heat shield part, which I removed from this. Which maybe I should reconsider. But maybe we'll just leave the ablator on. Why not? That one has it. We'll think about that in this new version. Tooling cost is minimal, it's just the payload fairings over here. But we need a lot more money to do this. I feel like targeted satellites would be nice. It's only one slot. Well, it, it'll give us something to do. Okay, navigational satellite. Um, that one at a 45 degree inclination NAVSAP payload. I mean, this requires a low eccentricity. This doesn't, but it's, it seems more compatible. Okay, let's put those. That could probably do a whole bunch of orbits, but we don't have the payload in. Well, we have 125 ComSat payload in here. We should toss in some experiments. I still need to get 100 units of NAVSAT payload and 20 units of WeatherSAT payload. Okay, target SAT 1. Should last a while. Basic avionics though. Pretty perpetual, okay. Okay, let's build one of those and launch that quickly. Okay, we are launching our targeted sat and hopefully I don't mess it up. But we do have a bigger rocket option already. So we could probably knock it out pretty quickly. Oh, the avionic. Oh, why did I have this rocket with insufficient avionics? Whoops. It's always half buried. 75 tons, we have one. Whatever, okay, fine. Save edits, 18 hours. Let's try that again. Okay, we have control. Where are we going? Low, above 300 kilometers, 
minimum eccentricity we need to keep that under control and inclination 45 degrees okay SAS on throttle up the ignition and launch so I'll just go 45 that'll definitely be a minimum of 45 okay booster set and we have some residual roll got RCS got a nice little engine should be okay okay we better get that antenna out I don't know if I should toss it up higher. Maybe I should just toss it up higher for comms. I mean, it is a minimum that they said after all. Uh, it checks the payloads. It knows we're above a 45 degree inclination. Did we put comm sats up? I think we did, but I don't know if they're going to be useful or not. <laughs> We're still only having the line back here. That says Comsat. They're overhead. I guess we have a line to them. Okay, next. Okay, we picked up a Comsat of some kind. <laughs> Uh, I don't want to overdo the contract too much. We'll say 400 kilometers. Okay. Okay, it should be satisfied with that. It is checking the orbits. It is fine with the orbit. Let's just make sure we get power when we finally meet up with the sun again. And this will just do some science. Let's just make sure it's happy. Okay, it's doing its thing. And we'll get some science. Alright, we have other contracts to fulfill, Space Center. We have to do the first communication satellite first. We can't do that at the same time as geostationary. 80 units of ComSat payload. I think our existing setup should be able to handle this. So let's just go for it quickly. Well, we shouldn't have the same science. 35. Uh, it should be okay for the. Uh, we're going to be putting it higher up. So maybe the orbital perturbation experiment can go in here. That, that infrared radiometer, we've done some. Um, well, 50 degrees. Well, we'll put it to 50 degrees then. We'll see. Targeted satellite 2. We do need to eventually upgrade the astronaut complex to do the EVAs though. That's 500,000. Okay. So we're going to a minimum 50 degree inclination even though the contract says 35 because we want to do the orbital perturbation experiment and fairly high orbit. All right, ignition. And launch. Okay, booster set. Well, we've lost comms. <laughs> hmm, we didn't have one of those little satellites around, apparently. We'll get to orbit, it's just not going to be a good orbit at this rate. Maybe we'll pick Kodiak up? We're pretty far away still, though. It'll be fine for the science. It's not gonna be useless. I just want to fulfill the contract. 
We need enough to lift our periapsis up to 850 kilometers. Come on, Kodiak. Talk to us. Just in case. Oh, there we go. Okay, we can save this. Okay, it's checking the orbit. That's all running. Okay. Gotta shut down avionics. And it'll just sit around doing its science. And we're done with that one. Back to Space Center. This one will be destroyed. I don't want to have destroyed satellites. We'll skip that. Um, geostationary is obviously different. And more challenging. We'll need more Delta V than we currently have for this. I'm just wondering... They're both going to need something a little bit more capable than what we've got. I think we should just... do that. Well, we'll pick both of them up. Did we have anything on this rocket that we needed to unlock still? Except for the pot. I guess the AJ-10s. We should test the AJ-10s. So, we'll test the AJ- let, let, let me get that payload though. Um, let's subassembly this. These Hydrolox AJ-10s probably don't reignite, do they? Oh, no, they have 18 ignitions. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, we'll try to go to this orbit. And so it wants 85 units of ComSat payload. Targeted set 3. Only a set. Only a set. Well, we'll probably need heat shields eventually. Maybe I should do that. I mean, the better heat shields. There's Gemini here. All right. Let's, just, let's launch in daylight. And we have to launch south. Which is fine from here. Alright, throttle up, SAS on, ignition. We've got five of them. And launch. Very important. This one does not have that much thrust to weight ratio. Well, Tanagashima is still in view as the booster is about to run out. Ooh, that was pretty close. Uh, we need to actually be less inclination. Oops. Quickly, less, less. Okay, we could probably point at the vector now. Well, that did the trick. And now these two. I got a lot of vertical speed out of that thing. Supposed to have periapsis above 500 kilometers, but not here. Down there. Well, we're gonna have to try out the restarts on these. We just started picking up flight data on them, though. Pretty confident that's good enough for now. Oh, we picked up Amalek there. And Australia. Well, they both restarted. We know that the Japanese used AJ-10s and they also used upper stage Hydrolox engines. We're just sort of combining the two here. And then we have oodles of Delta V. 500. Okay, that's good enough. Um, it looks like that satellite, target satellite 2, might help. But we also do have comms through McMurdo. Okay, weak signal, but let's go. 
we burn out the stage, it actually probably wouldn't be too far off. Okay. And those work just fine. Which means they'll fail when we're in a more critical situation. Alright, go! Okay. Um, yeah, RCS will do. Okay. Checking for orbit. And it's happy with that one. So let's make sure it's doing science. Okay, shut down. All right, it's doing its thing. Space Center. So geostationary, it's got this Tundra Orbit one too. That's the caps. That's the last one. Well, we'll pick it up. I think our our satellite launcher can do both. But let's do the Tundra Orbit one first. So 85 units of comsat payload. We have that exactly. That's the same as the Molnia one. And basically it's sort of the same deal. I think that's close enough. But we'll be going north this time. Okay, throttle up, SAS is on. And ignition. And launch. Okay, turning too quickly again. Booster set. Gay fairings. Oh, it's going haywire again. Okay, next. Oh, we only have one. RCS, please. Oh no, they're not tilted right. Okay. We, we only sort of tilted them so that they'd fit. Where is the center of mass? Oh, come on, you can tilt through that. We need stronger RCS on here if we gotta deal with that. Um, we can make orbit, but we can't actually get to that orbit with the payload. Okay, I'm going to spin. I'm gonna try and rotate and spin stabilize it. Is that fast enough? Well, we'll try it. It's not fast enough. <laughs> well, maybe we'll get some juice out of it. You're not trying to stop that roll. It is trying to stop the roll. Gosh darn it. But if I take it off, uh, it's not doing too badly. Well, hopefully Fizz Warp doesn't throw it off. It is throwing it off a bit. Maybe not too bad. Oh, we lost comms. I didn't extend the stupid antenna, did I? Well, there's there's Kodiak there. It might be all right. But yeah, with all the problems, I forgot the antenna. There we go. Uh. And antenna. Uh, let's shut down the engine for now. Okay. Now, where did we actually need the periapsis? And uh, well, that's not a bad place for the apoapsis. Maybe I'll. Uh, it wanted a minimum of one thousand kilometers. Oh. Ignited a little bit longer. 
Okay. Let's go with that one. We'll adjust as necessary. Okay, we have to stop the roll and turn around. We may or may not be able to do with this stage, depends how much RCS. It seems like they have plenty, but we'll see. And then we have to start the roll again. We could potentially do it with just the engine up here at this point. I'm not sure though. And we probably have to overdo it because we've got a low periapsis. We need the right period. A 24 hour period. 10 minutes, so we want apoapsis to be in 12 hours and 10 minutes. That doesn't violate anything, I don't think. I mean, a little bit less than 12 hours and 10 minutes, but that's about right. So, yeah, the next stage won't be quite enough. We need this to stop rotating and turn to that. Okay, we're gonna try it. Ignition. Just stay roughly there, it'll be alright. I mean, you're talking about how long it's gonna take to put the tiles on, but they're not already on? I mean, I haven't taken a look at what they're trying to send to the pad here. Well, with the spin stabilization, we are managing to make our one AJ-10 work out here. AJ-10 Hydrolox Edition. Getting good data on it, hopefully. We did that boil off of the hydrogen, that's why we're lower on it. Just using this as much as possible to get the data units. Okay. Um, let's kill rotation and node and all that business. Uh, you don't have to thrust forward. Okay, separation. Node. Ignition. Troll station. Uh-oh. We're relying on the troll station, but it is right below us. Okay, now it's okay. Let's just get it all with. All right, good. And then the sun. So, even with that engine out, we were successful, but we will need to review how they're tilted for protection against the failure of one engine. The, that tilt did not turn out to be enough. Okay, but I think that wraps it up for today. We, we need to do the Geosat contract. And by that time, hopefully, we'll have the amount that we need. No, we need 615,000. Well, Hopefully we'll be closer to having the amount we need to unlock the crew capsule, but we will see. We'll at least finish up the targeted satellite program. We barely started, basically, so we'll look into that. We have a new pod that we will use, and we will see if it works out for us.